Hey everybody, today we're going to be looking at additional earnings. Now additional earnings that we're going to be specifically talking about are tips, bonuses, and shift premiums. We're going to talk about where these come into play in different industries and also how they can affect your pay. In certain jobs, people earn additional money beyond their basic wage or salary. For example, tips, bonuses, and shift premiums. Now tips most often fall in the service industry from satisfied customers to show appreciation to that person. Um, other places you may see this would be example the hairdresser or the pizza delivery person. Most of these would fall in the service industry because they're coming from satisfied customers. So it's customers tipping you to increase the amount that you are earning. This would be bonuses. Now this is extra pay earned when certain conditions of employment have been met or exceeded. A bonus for staff who exceeded a sales target or staff who sign up new customers would be an example of this. Last example we're going to look at is shift premium. So extra payment for non-standard work hours. For example, a night shift premium, a, a weekend premium. So often it's times when people don't want to work those hours. The incentive is that they're going to be getting a shift premium for working these hours. Some people also earn extra money based on their work environment or the time of day they work. Some people who work in remote areas might earn an isolation allowance or in Manitoba you might hear it termed as a northern allowance because they're going up north in remote locations and they're given an extra allowance as an incentive to work there. And last, people who work in potentially dangerous situations, such as members of the armed forces, may earn a danger pay. Right now, anybody who is working the front lines during COVID is also receiving hazard pay because of the danger that they're putting themselves in. In example one here, your restaurant gives 5% of the tips received in a shift to employees working in the kitchen. If $2,100 is received in tips and there are five people working in the kitchen, how much will each person receive? The first thing that we need to look at is the information in these sentences. So it's 5% of the tips received that goes to the employees in the kitchen. The total amount was $2,100 received in tips and there are five people working in the kitchen. We need to now take our 5% and turn it into a decimal. So you'd have your five over 100 multiplied by the total amount earned, which was $2,100. And this would give us an amount of $105.00. Now that would be 5% of the total um, received in tips, which was $2,100. The last part that we need to look at is there's five people in the kitchen. So the tip amount of $105 for the kitchen is divided amongst five people, which means that they're going to get each $21 a person. Remember to make sure you're including your dollar sign, you're going to two decimal places, and you also in this situation have a unit of per person. Example two, you work a four hour shift as a server and our customer bills total $2,500 before tips. Your rate of pay is $8.75 an hour. If all of your customers tipped you 10%, how much did you earn an hour in wages and in tips? So we're looking at how much did you earn in wages and tips in total? You were tipped 10% 
your rate of pay is $8.75 an hour, and the total of the customer bills was $2,500 before tips. So we now have to figure out what 10% of that $2,500 was. So your tips are equal to 10 over 100, to put it into a decimal, multiplied by our $2,500, which gives us an amount of $250, zero cents. The next thing that we need to figure out is the tips per hour, because they worked a four hour shift. $250 was for the four hours worked, and we're trying to figure out uh, how much was earned in hours. So what we need to do is the tips per hour equal our $250 divided by four, which gives us $62.50 per hour. Our last part that we need to figure out is what is our wage? Well, our wage equals our hourly rate, which is $8.75, which is well below minimum wage now, plus our $62.50, which adds up to $71.25 per hour. So with the tips and the hourly rate, this person is making $71.25 per hour, which is quite good. Example B and C here, we're going to continue on with this um, calculation, but we're going to look at if they were tipped 15% and also if they were tipped 20%. And it's going to show how much a difference makes to the service industry based on how much the person is tipping. So to calculate the tip, it equals 15%. Now I'm going to turn that into a decimal already, which is 0 0.15, multiplied by our 2,500 dollars. And I'm going to divide it by four now because I want to get our hourly rate and we know that they worked four hours. So make sure you're following your order of operations. So you're going left to right here. And our total amount will be $93.75. Our wage in total, when we're getting tipped 15%, will be still our $8.75 per hour, which is our rate of pay, plus our $93.75, which equals a total amount of $102 and 50 cents. In part C here, it says if we were tipped 20%, so we're going to follow the exact same steps to calculate the tip, which equals 0 0.20, which is our 20%, multiplied by how much was brought in on the bills, which was $2,500, divided by four, because that was the number of hours we worked, which gives us a total of $125.00. Next, we have to do our wage, which again, is our eight seventy-five an hour, plus our $125.00. cents gives us a total of $133.75. Now you can see the difference when they were tipped 10%, they
they were making $71.25, all the way up to 20%, where they're making $133.75, and this is per hour. So it makes a large difference the more the service industry is tipped. D asked, do you think certain working hours would be better for earning tips? Which hours and why? Now, not many of you have worked in the service industry yet, but if you think about it, when is the times that most people are going out to eat? And what is the time that the meals cost the most? Well, dinner time is gonna be the busiest for our servers. It's going to be when the most people go out with their families and sit down and the prices on the meals are more expensive. Usually lunch prices are cheaper to draw people in where dinner prices are going to be more expensive. So in the service industry, that means you're going to be seeing more customers bringing in more tips and they're also going to be spending more because they're going to be bringing in their family and they're also going to be spending more per plate. So dinner time would be the busiest and the best for tips. In example three, Kyle works in a bookstore selling books. He also sells customer reward cards for $30 that will give them a discount on future purchases. His employer gives him a bonus of 10% of the amount received if he sells more than 20 cards in a month. If his regular wages are $1,883.77 and he sells 27 reward cards in one month, what will Kyle's wage be including the bonus? Now let's look through these couple of sentences to see what we need to calculate. So the first thing is, he sells 27 reward cards. If he sells more than 20 cards, he gets a bonus of 10%. So he sold 27, he's above that 20 cards a month. So he will be getting that bonus of 10%. Now they sell the cards for $30. So for each card, he's going to be getting 10% of that amount. His wage, so the regular wage, is $1,883.77. So whatever the bonus is will be added on to that wage. So let's calculate the bonus first here. The bonus is calculated based off of 10% of the total amount brought in for those reward cards. He sold 27 at $30 each, and he gets 10% of it. So I'm going to turn this into a decimal, which would be 10 divided by 100 to get my 0 0.10. So we take 27 multiplied by 30, then multiplied by our 10%, and we get $81.00. So that's the bonus that he's receiving on top of his wage. Well, his wage is $1,833.77 plus the $81.00 for the bonus gives a total of $1,964.77. The last example is example four here. He works as a stock clerk for a grocery store in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. His regular pay is $12 an hour but he earns a shift premium of $2 an hour for any hour he works between 5 p.m. and 8 a.m. Jacob earns 1.5 times his pay rate in overtime for any hours he works above 35 hours a week. His timesheet is shown below. So this is the entire hours that he has worked. 
Part A says, how many regular hours did Jacob work this week? Let's first unpack everything that's going on in these couple of sentences. So regular pay is $12 an hour. A shift premium is $2 an hour for anything he works between 5 p.m. and 8 a.m. So anything after 5 p.m. and up to 8 a.m. in the morning, he's going to receive a shift premium of $2 an hour. Now, also earns 1.5 times his pay rate in overtime for any hours above 35 hours a week. Let's first break down these days. So Monday works 12 a.m. to 8 a.m. Now this will be eight hours, but the thing is, it's going to fall between this shift premium hours. So I'm going to put SP because it falls after 5 p.m. and is before 8 a.m. So there's eight hours that are going to be shift premium hours. On Tuesday, it's 12 a.m. to 8 a.m. So again, I'm going to put shift premium of eight hours. On Wednesday, works 4 p.m. to 12 a.m. Shift premium starts at 5 p.m. It means there's one regular hour, and then from 5 until 12 a.m. means that there was seven shift premium hours. Thursday, he works 6 a.m. to 11 a.m. That means from 6 to 8 were shift premium hours. So you have two shift premium hours. And from 8 until 11, you have three regular hours. Let's just divide these up here so that they don't get mixed together. On Friday, you have from 6 a.m. to 11 a.m. Again, the same hours as Thursday, meaning you're going to have regular hours of 3 and shift premium hours of 2. And on Saturday, it's from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m., which means he worked a total of 7 regular hours because it does not fall in that shift premium. So back to part A where it says, how many regular hours did Jacob work this week? Well, we can look above and we have 1 plus 3 plus 3 plus 7 equals a total of 14 regular hours. The next thing we need to look at is how many hours of overtime did Jacob work this week? Now, if we add all of these hours together, we're going to have to figure out what's our total hours for the week. Well, we have 8 plus 8 plus our 1 plus 7 plus 3 plus 2 plus 3, plus 2, plus 7, to get our total hours for the week, which gives us a total of 41 hours for the week. Now, anything above 35 hours is overtime. So subtracting 35 hours equals 6 hours of overtime that will be paid. Now, it's important to pay attention to this six hours because if six hours is going to be considered overtime, then that changes our original answer for our regular hours. We had 14 hours, but we have to subtract six hours to OT, which gives us a total of eight regular hours. Yeah. 
So that's our total for regular hours. So we have six overtime hours and eight regular hours. So that means the rest of them are gonna fall into that shift premium hours, which we're gonna talk about in part C. So the hours between 5 p.m. and 8 a.m. Well, on Monday had eight, Tuesday had eight, Wednesday seven, Thursday two, Friday, two, Saturday and Sunday, well there is no Sunday, but Saturday had zero, Saturday zero, which gives us a total of 27 hours that are shift premium hours. So what is Jacob's gross pay for the week? Well, regular hours, equal the regular pay of $12 an hour multiplied by our eight regular hours equals $96.00. Next, we can calculate our OT hours. So OT equals our regular rate of $12 multiplied by the increase of 1.5 times our six hours over here. So times six equals the total amount of $108. And last we have our shift premium. Let's, I was gonna put extra, but put shift premium equals our $2 on top of our regular $12. So bringing it up to $14 an hour multiplied by, and we have here our 27 hours, which are shift premium. So times are 27 gives us a total of $378 dollars and zero cents and the last thing we need to do is add these all together so we're going to add the 96 the 108 and the 378 which gives us a total of 582 dollars and zero cents which is jacob's gross pay for the week Last part of today's lesson asks what percentage of Jacob's weekly earnings are paid at the regular rate? Well, if you looked back at our numbers, most of our pay rate actually fell within that shift premium, which was great for Jake because he chose to work those hours that most often people don't want to work and was earning more money because of it. Now, if we look up to the amounts that we had here, so we had $96 for our regular pay and a total amount of $582. We'll take our $96.00 divided by our $582.00 and we'll divide that and multiply it by our 100%, which gives us a total amount of 16.5% is what he earned during regular hours. So most of his hours were not through the regular hour rate, meaning that he was collecting shift premium for almost all of them. Now that brings us to the end of the lesson for today. If you have any questions, make sure you ask me in class or send me a message over Teams.